This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Ataro's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Ataro. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. At the tail end of this week, Elon Musk said that he wants Tesla shareholders to vote immediately on Tesla moving its U.S. state of incorporation from Delaware to Texas. Musk posted a poll on X asking followers if Tesla should make the switch after a Chancery Court judge in the state of Delaware voided a reward package worth 56 billion U.S. dollars that was agreed on by the majority of Tesla shareholders in 2018. The judge said that Musk, quote, enjoyed thick ties with the directors tasked with negotiating on behalf of Tesla and dominated the process that led to board approval of his compensation plan, end quote, essentially agreeing with Tesla shareholder Richard Tornetta, who had filed the lawsuit against Tesla and Musk on the grounds that it was excessive and that it breached both fiduciary duties. Shortly after the ruling, Musk stated, quote, never incorporate your company in the state of Delaware, end quote. And he now wants Tesla shareholders to approve Tesla moving its state of incorporation to Texas. Why the sudden plan to move? While we're likely to get hate mail and worse for saying so, given the timing, it seems Musk is hopeful Texas courts will be more favorable to Tesla in any future cases, even though Delaware is famous for being one of the easiest states for a company to be incorporated in. When automakers announced their intent to make a switch from CCS Type 1 connectors in North America, adopting Tesla's NAX inlet instead, many automakers promised existing customers would soon be able to use Tesla's supercharger network via new adapters. This week, Ford, the first automaker to announce the switch, confirmed it will soon begin shipping NAX adapters to existing F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mark E customers. What's more, those adapters will be shipped free of charge to the customer. While Ford has yet to officially detail the exact process of charging on Tesla's network, it's likely the end experience will be very similar to using one of the existing charging station providers that have signed on to Ford's Blue Oval Charge Network. We have an adapter in the mail, so watch this space. The Polestar 4 has now officially gone on sale in Europe and Australia. Being marketed as an SUV coupe, the Polestar 4 does have a full traditional hatchback, giving plenty of access to the rear of the vehicle and allowing large things to be carried with rear seats down. But what's different about Polestar 4 is its complete lack of rear window, with a high-mounted rear-view camera and centre mirror screen replacing a traditional optical mirror. On sale in Europe from 68,500 euros, including taxes, its entry-level long-range single-motor variant offers up to 379 miles, 610 kilometers, on the WLTP test cycle. Meanwhile, its performance variant, while shorter on range, packs 400 kilowatts at the wheels. When General Motors decided to cancel production of its second-generation Chevrolet Volt range-extended EV after two years of production, it made the statement it was time to go all-in on EVs instead. But this week, Mary Barra, who has come under increasing pressure for promising things that GM has failed to deliver, announced that GM is doing a U-turn on plug-in hybrids. During GM's earning call this week, Barra claimed GM was committed to, quote, eliminating tailpipe emissions, end quote, but that, quote, deploying plug-in technology in strategic segments will deliver some of the environmental benefits of EVs as the nation continues to build its charging infrastructure, end quote. Given that there are plenty of scientific studies showing plug-in hybrids are nowhere near as emissions reducing as claimed in the past, this is just the latest in a long line of automakers delaying EV promises and deciding that profits come before a livable planet. We should all be mad.
And since we might be feeling a little frustrated right now, let's go to a story in a similar vein. The confirmation that Toyota has been found cheating in diesel certification tests. Making a public statement on Monday, Toyota Motor in Japan said that it would halt shipments of 10 different models that use diesel engines, including the High Ace Van, the Land Cruiser and more, after it was discovered that engineers at its sibling company, Toyota Industries, used different software during engine certification tests than the software used in its production vehicles, meaning that all of the engine data for those vehicles was essentially fabricated. While Toyota has halted production, it claims production engines do comply with standards. To something much more exciting now, particularly for fans of the Nissan Leaf or other Chadamo based EVs. It's no secret that in recent years, Chadamo has been left out in the cold when it comes to public charging infrastructure, with many charging locations only offering one Chadamo compatible charging station and many new sites offering none at all. But as we've been aware for a while, many companies are working on Chadamo to CCS adapt that allow you to use a Chadamo car at a CCS charging station. Because the two different standards use different protocols, it's not just a physical connector, it's an electrical connector too. But a few weeks ago, our good friend Dala from Dala's EV Repair in Finland successfully demonstrated charging a Nissan Leaf at a CCS Type 2 charging station using just such an adapter made by Dong Huan Long Good. I don't think there's a CCS Type 1 yet, but we can live in hope. More good news in the charging world next, this time in the US, where Daimler Truck North America, Navistar and Volvo Group North America have created a new coalition to accelerate the rollout of charging stations for electric trucks. While you might be questioning why Tesla isn't part of the group, it is worth noting that when it comes to market share, these three companies capture about 70% of the medium and heavy duty electric truck market in the US, so it really makes sense they're working together. The goal, through powering America's commercial transportation, aka Pact, they'll work to advocate for truck-friendly charging sites, help accelerate the deployment of the 700,000 truck-friendly charging stations they say are needed by 2030, and more. Bring it! In order to build the US's first LFP battery production facility, Ford has been working alongside LFP battery specialist CATL to make everything go as smoothly as possible. But the fact Ford is working with CATL, a Chinese-based company, has upset multiple Republican lawmakers who want the Biden administration to investigate Ford and its relationship with the firm and three other Chinese firms working on its facility. Ultimately, they allege Ford's new plants could attract US federal government tax incentives designed to encourage domestic EV battery cell production, but that in turn could result in Chinese companies, and thus the Chinese government, getting US taxpayer dollars. With the US general election just 10 months away and anti-EV political rhetoric, at an all-time high, this could be a bumpy ride for Ford and, in fact, any other automaker looking to work with Chinese-based battery firms. It's become something of an expectation in the EV world that new electric vehicles will get delayed shortly before they're due to start deliveries, and it's usually down to software glitches. This week, Volvo became the latest to confirm that there's a delay on European deliveries of its all-new EX30 electric SUV. The second time Volvo has been forced to delay deliveries of a vehicle due to software issues, a source close to the firm told Automotive News Europe that Volvo had identified an issue with EX30 software version 1.2 and that while Volvo does plan to offer OTA updates in the future, this particular issue can only be fixed by visiting a dealership. Right now, we are unsure when the software updates will be ready and pushed to customers' cars ahead of deliveries. But if you are in the line for an EX30 in Europe, we'd love to know what Volvo has told you. So reach out in the comments below. 
You might not know this, but while the price of conventional silicon-based photovoltaic solar panels has come down a lot in recent years, the cells in those panels are still pretty energy inefficient at turning photons hitting them into electrical current. But this week, Oxford PV, a company spun off from the University of Oxford in 2010, announced it's reached a breakthrough milestone in perovskite on silicon tandem solar cells, producing a tandem solar cell with 421 watts of maximum power output over an area of 1.68 square metres. For reference, the traditional silicon solar cells on the roof of my home are 25% larger but only produce 5% more power than the panels made by Oxford PV. Perovskite cells require far less energy to produce than traditional solar cells, don't have to use silicon at all unless they are used in tandem cells, and they can be printed on a wide range of different surfaces. Solar future is looking so bright. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Altera, you should very much check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about special deals you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get clean, green charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. We love ourselves small, affordable cars on this channel. And while the auto industry en masse seems to be trying pretty bloody hard to erase small affordable EVs, we're going to continue to shout their praises for as long as we can. Which is why this week we were very disheartened to hear multiple news outlets reporting the claim that Volkswagen is considering cancelling its ID3 electric vehicle, the current smallest ID badged EV you can buy. The reason is the upcoming ninth generation Volkswagen Golf, which the company has already confirmed will be all electric. It is, according to the company's head of technical development, a little close to the same market that the ID3 currently occupies. With the ID2 also scheduled for production, it looks as if Volkswagen is worried that it will have too many similarly sized EVs on sale and the ID3 could get cut as a consequence. And Finally, we regularly state on this channel that your mileage may and will vary. And while automaker range promises are a rough guide, there's nothing better than a real world range test to see how well a vehicle will perform. And when it comes to range tests, there are none as good as the annual winter range test for EVs carried out by the Norwegian Automobile Federation and Motor Magazine. This year, the pair tested more EVs than ever before, testing more than 20 different models to see which was the best in terms of range and efficiency at cold temperatures. This year, though, there was a new winner with the Hi-Fi Z traveling more than 522 kilometers, 324 miles on a charge despite the winter weather. Not only did it travel the furthest, but it also managed to get a range closest to its official WLTP quoted range. Good job, guys. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure that you smash that notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And if you haven't yet switched, it's high time you switch to Altera's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. Believe me, it is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will, of course, be back next week as per usual. But in the meantime, be sure to check out other great content on this channel, including that made by the absolutely awesome Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. He's been driving the Nissan Aria lately and I think he had fun. I'm Nick and Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the week. Kakite. See you next time.